Okay, new week. A um, little bit of an unusual week for us because we've got a got a head start on NAU after the Thursday game. Uh, I had a chance to review the film with the, the guys and get a practice in on uh, full pad of practice in on Saturday. Uh, thought our guys did a nice job coming back off a a tough uh, loss on Thursday night. Got a lot corrected. Got a lot to correct, and uh, we'll be excited to play against NAU on, on Saturday at Sam Boyd. Can, can you look to use you said the Utah sort of teachable moment for this week about not overlooking anyone? Yeah, we brought it up uh, Saturday. That will be the last time we bring it up, aside from when you make me. But uh, <laughs> uh, we, we brought it up on Saturday, and uh, we don't need everybody here is painfully aware of that lesson, and, and uh, we hope we don't have to revisit that Saturday. Doug and Tim, can you just talk about that, about, you know, using that as, as a way not to take on the opponent lightly? Well, I mean, every opponent isn't to be taken lightly, but it's especially poignant in my mind after what happened last fall. And, uh, you know, just something that I want to keep from uh, repeating. Yeah, same here. I think all, I mean, everybody on our team takes every game as if, Every game the same. We're not going to take one opponent less than another. So we're, I know for a fact we're not going to have that problem this year. I don't think we had it last year, but I know our guys are going to go out there and play hard, no matter who we're playing. Can you go through uh, your history with Coach Sowers? You bet. You just, like, shake your hand and say you're going to be a football coach. What did he see in you? He, you know, uh, you he, Jerome's an old friend, obviously, and, and a good football coach. And, and – uh, <clears throat> when uh, when Craig Paulson and I were finishing up school, we were roommates, and and uh, um, Coach Reed and, and uh, Jerome Sowers had had uh, seen me around. My brother was was one of their players, and and uh, spent a lot of time with them. We went to games. We we did a lot of uh, um, evaluation of high school kids, and and uh, I was going to go take a teaching job. And, and coach some high school football, and they asked if I'd be interested in helping out there, and and it's uh, you know been a, a wild ride since. But uh, Jerome Montana. at Montana, Montana. yeah, as we, as as we were graduating, yeah, and he was he was the uh, secondary coach at the time, and Don Reed was the head coach, and you know they gave me an opportunity, and and uh, always been grateful for it, obviously. And then you were at NAU, but not with him. Yeah, I was at my first uh, job after being a grad assistant at UCLA was with Steve Axman at NAU, and then uh, went from there to Colorado. And a couple of years later, Jerome was uh, was the head coach there after Ax. And uh, was Jerome on the staff when you were there? Uh, he was not. He was actually at Montana still. Okay. So, but he, he's one of those guys. He's he's been an old and dear friend for a long time. Got some success. Yeah, we've been fortunate. <laughs> You say the same thing about Jerry Kill until last Thursday night too. No so. <laughs> we don't even I don't even know how to spell that. Cat, bet, dog. Some coaches have said in the past that they don't head coaches, they don't call plays. They will say, I wanna see this on the next drive, I wanna see this. How much do you, what percentage do you do that now? Mm. Do some of that. You know, I, I with me coordinating the special teams, I've got my hands full in particular early in the week. Uh, you know, I really don't generally get on the the opponent's offense and defense until Monday night. Usually, all all, uh, all day Sunday and all day Monday, uh, I'm on the special teams. So, I, you know, our, our coordinators and our offense and defensive staffs, because they aren't involved in the kicking game, they in terms of the film breakdown they they're way ahead of me during the week and thus have more <clears throat> time on that film ed so you know I always feel like they've got a better handle on the opponent than I do um, with that being said you know I, I do that some uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, I'm not calling a lot of plays on Saturdays either side of the ball I'll, but I'll you know I'm we consult on a lot of things uh, sometimes I will say I want to see something in the next series or in the uh, next couple series, I'll, we'll talk about more pressure, less pressure on defense, um, what we're doing on first down. Uh, you know, if we've got a trick play, if we've got something special up, we'll. Uh, I'm always. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know. If you go in at halftime, I'll say specifically last game, 
do you look at stats at halftime? Uh, no, no, I don't usually. Usually, we, you know, we've got 20 minutes. Um, really, we have six minutes of offense and defensive staff time. I try to have, I usually take some notes or at least mental notes, if not actual written notes on the sideline and usually go in and convey that to the offense and defensive staffs. They're working hard on their adjustment stuff, so I, I try not to be uh, too intrusive there. I mean, I, I get my bullet points across and then go to the other side of the ball and then while they're finishing their adjustments I usually go grab the kicking game kids and make those adjustments and then and then they're out with their their groups for about um, you know four minutes per side of the ball with the coordinators and then four minutes each in position groups and then we got to go back out so it, it's halftime's pretty rushed. Um, you know, we held, we held them to 13 in regulation, which is pretty solid effort. Probably the best we've had in our time here. Uh, something we can build off of. We had some good, uh, uh, performances individually. Tim played very well to be singled out. But there, there were some good performances. Um, I, we've got to get better in our pass rush. We've got to tackle better. We, we've got to get our eyes fixed uh, in the back end at times in terms of the coverage. So there's some things to work on, certainly. We're, we're, we're getting started, not uh, a finished product. I mean, you, you look at the stats, Tim did, has one, two of everything. Uh, he really did have a great game, like you said. Uh, uh, it, I mean, how impressed were you? Did, did you see, uh, you know, leading up to, to the year that he could have a really great start like this? Yeah, he's one of the guys I pointed out that has worked extremely hard, and you like to see hard work pay off. Um, he and I were just talking about that a second ago, and all, all the, I said, "You played a really nice game on Thursday," and all he said is, "I've got to get better," which is uh, shows me the right attitude and the right approach. And it, I think we've got a locker room full of guys like that. Tim, where do you feel like you, you still want to improve? <clears throat> um, I mean, if I can improve in every everything, I mean, I missed missed a couple of tackles out there. That I mean, our, as a group, we all missed a couple of tackles that we know we can make. So that's our major concern right now. And I mean that's after we watched the film on uh, on Saturday, we all saw what we did wrong, and that's mainly what we want want to improve on to make our defense even stronger. So that's that's where our main focus is now. You personally, I mean, you did have a really good game to uh, to start the year. Uh, I guess just what went, what went right for you out there? Um, I just I was just prepared, went through my scouting report, coaches, game planned it pretty good, and I was just. Just felt like I was in the right spot at the right time. My eyes were good, so that's what I just plan to improve, make sure that it continues. Doug, would you would you agree that um, I mean, all you guys up front have kind of played games now. I mean, there's you know, with your class setting, we've all played games, and it always says the offensive line takes pride in run blocking, but uh, your freshman was running around a lot to avoid being hit or hit. So, what can be done to help protect them more when you throw them once the throw the ball? Um. You know, just a little bit more effort here and there, a little bit better execution. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into having a good pass, good pass protection, and there's a lot of different position groups that are involved in it. And yes, the bulk of that does fall to the offensive line, and that's something that we're going to improve on this week and through the coming weeks. Coach, you talked a lot about things that need, that, uh, need improvement. What, what are you feeling good about? What are you feeling strong about? Uh, you know, I, f I feel good about the our personnel. I, I like the guys we have in our locker room. I think we've got the right attitude. Uh, obviously, with uh, with our team being where they are, we've got to keep coming along. We've got to get uh, better technically. We've got to uh, be more responsibility and assignment conscious. But uh, you know, it was it was a decent first outing. We got to win the game. We find a way to win that game. It's a triple overtime loss. There, there was a lot of plays in there where we could have found a way to win. We got to do that. We need to do it this weekend. Is that? Is that? That's been the past several years. You know, we've had trouble winning those types of games. Is that? Is that a bigger hurdle? Do you still have to overcome? Anything? Uh, it's a good question, Mark. I don't. I don't know that I have a uh, have uh, a good answer to it. I. I do know that. Uh, um, our guys were real comfortable 
in the as I said, we're real comfortable in those situations on Thursday. I mean, it wasn't there was no uh, there was urgency, but there was no um, panic or franticness. It was it was guys were had the right look in their eye and and they were out there doing their job. And and uh, as I said, uh, when you and I talked on Saturday, on Friday or Saturday, whenever it was, uh, you know, our guys. It seemed to me they were comfortable in that situation. Yeah, we we can get a lot out of it. We obviously exchanged film from last year too with them. Um, you know, they're in a tough situation. One, they're playing up against a, a Pac-12 team, and two, it's a completely new staff at, at Arizona State, so they didn't have really any idea what they were going to see, and uh, you know, they got ambushed a little bit. So, in terms of result and and what we'll see on Saturday, uh, NAU felt good about their team going into their season uh when you watch them athletically uh in terms of just their ability their size their maturity um i think they'll have a good team this year so we need to we need to not uh get sidetracked by what that score was certainly when they, lose, they lost their starting quarterback and running back what is, does that throw off preparations this week uh, yeah, it does. We need to we need to find out one how accurate that is, and and two, uh, um, you know, if they're going to change. We don't really know. We didn't. We have to anticipate some change, uh, but the, they've got good depth at running back. Um, you know, l losing their starter, he's probably their best player on offense. Uh, if he doesn't make it back, then. You know that there will be a little drop off, but I think they like their running backs, and and historically they've had good speed and good players at that position there. Yeah, they they've got good players, and they, and they always have had good players at running back going going way way back. I mean, I can rattle I can rattle off a few names out of the deep dark past. Deep dark and Tim Baldwin, yeah, as coach mentioned, that you know there's kind of a different maybe feel to the to the team this year. Maybe they have confidence, that, that ability to go out and say, hey, you know what, we're not going to get beat up. We're going to go out. Do you, do you, what do you kind of see in the locker room, in the faces of the players? Uh, go ahead, Tim. Oh, well, as far as me, like as, talking to a lot of players, every all of us know we got a great coach, great whole coaching staff. It's just time for us to go out there and show that. That's our big thing. I mean, all of us, we, we know we can play. It's just all of us going out there and playing a complete game, not just playing a, a good quarter against a team, a good half against boys. You go out there and play a, a complete game against no matter who comes, whether ranked, not ranked, it doesn't matter. We just need to go out there. And I think this year we all have that confidence. Like we are we can go hang with any team in this country. It doesn't matter who comes in. It's it's a new vibe out there. Everybody just feels like we can we can compete with anybody. I think that a lot of people on the team understand that there's going to be bad plays and there's going to be good plays in a football game. And you have to be able to ride the tide and weather the storm in some cases. And that's really the big difference that I've seen is people don't get too high in the high parts and too low in the lows. We stay pretty even keeled. And we did a good job of that on Thursday. And that's really the biggest difference that I've seen. There's no huge swings in emotion on the sideline. Something that you wouldn't have said last year, or would you have said the same thing last year? I mean, what's, what's kind of the difference? I, I think everybody's just buying in. It's no, I mean, it's not that nobody was going all out last year. It's just, it's kind of like some negative person, negative personalities here and there. And one person says something to bring the team down. Everybody wants to jump on their back and start riding it. We lose a couple games and people just start feeling sorry for themselves and want to blame other people. And that's just that's just gone. We got leaders in there, just leading everybody the right way, getting that negativity out of there, and just no matter what happens each week, we're just gonna keep going out. Start each week zero and zero. We're zero and zero this week. We're just trying to get to one and zero. So that's we're taking each week one at a time. So Tim hit the nail on the head. We're a group of guys that really want to go out there and fight to show that we deserve to be there. Dang, couldn't have said it better myself. Coach, if you're building a house. <laughs> I'm a lethal weapon with power tools in my hand. I, I I'm not good at any of that stuff. I'm more of a sledgehammer type. What's that? Nothing. Go ahead. Sorry. How is that? That you got the foundation laid. You got your players in here. 
I mean, how's the, the structure looking that if you had to kind of be pointed to a building the house? I think we got to wait and see. We got to we got to go another twelve weeks, and then we'll be able to answer that question a little better. I think, Chris. But um, when you look at when you look at the recruiting the last couple of years, and you look at the work we've done in the weight room, uh, I think we've we've got a good start on things. I really do. So, uh, you know, obviously the the front guys, the young front kids, take the most time in terms of the development part. Um, but I think we're well on our way there. I do, and. Standing up against Minnesota toe to toe last weekend was probably a a decent indicator that we're making some progress in that regard. Can you expand a little bit on what Tim was saying just about that? It was a long rambling answer. Which part? Well, <laughs> 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 those few bad seeds. How uh, how destructive is that? You know, a few you know the negative. I mean, can it actually be a destructive thing? Ah, uh, I don't know. That's kind of what's history's history. We, I like where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you've got good team chemistry, <clears throat> it's a it's a great thing. How you get it, uh, I don't think coaches really know. And uh, when you have it, I'm not sure you know exactly how you got it. But I think we've got it. So I, I think a lot because we've got good character in our locker room and good leadership. Bobby and Marcus, when, when, did he get hurt on the last play of the first half? Was it was the towards the end of the second quarter. I don't remember exactly which play. I mean, last drive. Yeah, he he went up, made a nice catch, got his ankle twisted up. And, you know, he's been fighting through some stuff. It, it would have been nice, certainly. Any time he gets the ball, he's he's uh, he's pretty dynamic with it. It would have been nice to have him in the second half. He had what five catches in the last and a half. So yeah. Pretty good start. What do you have? You, you anticipate him being ready for Saturday? Uh, yeah, I'd anticipate that. Um, we'll we're gonna come out with an injury report tomorrow, and you know. I'll, in, in terms of an attempt to be a little more accurate, you know, another day of treatment, we'll see. But I'm hopeful we'll have him. Better Eric Johnson? Uh, I guess see how it goes today, Mark, and then again tomorrow we'll we'll let you know. I'd say ahead of time, I'd say questionable. Is it kind of more fun facing a guy that you know real well? Mm. I don't know. I don't, you know, it's not like we call each other and say, "How's the game plan going?" We, you know, <laughs> we don't talk much. <laughs> you know, we don't. We don't. Frankly, we don't talk much at all during the season, any of us. But uh, nah, I wouldn't say that. I'd say, heck, I think you like playing people you don't like better than people you like, because you're trying to beat everybody. You know. Yeah, we uh, we we came out pretty clean, and and uh, you know I'd say that's probably a, again we're pointing to things that uh, show we're making some progress in that conversation in terms of the question uh, asked earlier. You know, we we came out pretty clean health-wise. It was a it was a physical game.